Martin and David, please, you can remain in your seats and we'll uh, have some questions from the audience. I've got some written questions here. Um, the first one's for um, Martin. And um, um, first off, it said, thanks for a great overview. And then the question asks, in one of your graphs, you showed a decline in North America. Can you shed some light on that? And this question comes from Canada. The decline? Graph that there was a decline in North America. I don't know which graph that was, but there is no decline in North America. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think it's rather the opposite because with the shale gas revolution you have in the U.S., that means industrial um, activities will, will uh, grow even faster and that means everything that is industry, everything that is consumption at the very end is chemistry. And this is also why our markets always grow above GDP. So I, I don't have any negative feelings about uh, North American development. Okay. Good, thank you. Um, and remember, if you've got some questions, uh, if you have a question, write it down, and we have some uh, TDC people walking around. They'll collect your written question and, and pass it up to me. Um, question for David. Um, I'm going to a little bit add to this question. The question is simply that is, it's easy to set up a business in Hong Kong. How so? But I'd like to relate that question directly to OMA because you opened in Hong Kong four years ago and you've grown very dramatically. 25% of, of OMA globally is now based in Hong Kong. Can you talk about what was the easiest thing about Hong Kong that helped you grow your business and any, any unexpected hurdles that you had to overcome? On, on, so both what was, what was easy and maybe what was difficult? I think the easiest way was to find our direction. Um, there are many people in Hong Kong that support businesses on how to set up, but also how to kind of make connections in the city uh, at many levels, uh, on the highest political level, but also kind of in the financial sector or related to any other business, which is kind of not common. Uh, very often you have to discover your way but here people will invite you to the discover the way together, uh, which to me was a big surprise because I simply didn't know uh, before we moved uh, here. Uh, so that made it very easy to make uh, contacts, but also to establish a company quickly. Uh, hurdles, um, I think there is, Hong Kong is an amazing city. Uh, it has everything kind of a metropolis has. Uh, but there are also a few disadvantages. It's of course a small territory and a border is very close. So you need to very often reach out. Uh, and reaching out uh, from Hong Kong is very easy because it's logistically well connected. Um, but in the reaching out you sometimes have a skepticism to encounter from countries around uh, that say, yeah, but Hong Kong is a special territory of China what will happen in the future to it, so what will happen when I do business with a company that is established there. So it is a gateway to China, sometimes you have to overcome a little bit of skepticism when you reach out from Hong Kong, however the financial situation of the city makes that hurdle disappear very quickly because if you tell two clients Ah, you don't need to pay me any VAT, you don't need to kind of be worried about any taxes so my fee can be lower than if I would be in Singapore or in Kuala Lumpur, they're easily convinced. <laughs> um, you just mentioned Singapore at the end, which ties into this question. Next question, it's for Martin. Um, Martin, before we came up to the stage, he asked me what, what, what's the audience's background, what, what questions would they like, you know, what type of information could you share with the that Martin could share with the group. And I said back, we're going to get a question about comparing Hong Kong to Singapore and Shanghai. And we do. We have one, and it's for you. Um, and it's from Finland. Um, Martin, you, you mentioned that you have regional centers in both Hong Kong and Singapore. Um, can you talk about what they're different? Are they different roles between those two offices? And then how do you compare the pros and cons of operating in Hong Kong, Singapore, and Shanghai? Well, um, as I mentioned, the, the major headquarters is here in Hong Kong that caters about 75% of the units and uh, the task we have to do. The other almost 25% are in Singapore. This is a few things that are connected with some of the key industries. So, for example, petrochemical industry, 
the hub is Singapore, that is where also the other companies are which, with whom you have in, to engage, so that's why it's located over there. And there are some uh, business units that very much have the focus on India, because Singapore is a bit closer to, to that market. Uh, but that is mainly the, the, the two differentiators of how we have um, um, uh, distributed the business. Shanghai, as I clearly said, um, I think it would be completely wrong to bring a regional headquarter into Shanghai because the focus on China is anyway so big because it's always the major chunk of your business. But if you then bring the regional headquarter into China, it's all about China. You need to distract a little bit from China, not to forget the other markets in Asia Pacific outside of China. And I think in that respect, both locations are, are good, Singapore and Hong Kong. And somehow I always feel that this is a bit a healthy competition. I think it's always the prime benchmark of Singapore to look on Hong Kong and the other way around. And I think at the very end it brings both uh, cities forward to, to benchmark with each other. They have gone a little bit a different um, route, I have to say. Singapore differentiated more in the, in the uh, pr production part and in the education part. It's remarkable that a, a small country like Singapore has 25% production. And actually, I think if we learned anything out of the crisis in 2008, 2009, then it's all the countries who have a lot of manufacturing came up back uh, faster again. And I think it's just a healthy part of, of um, a society. In terms of cost, I have to say it's no big difference because I think Shanghai, Hong Kong, Singapore is all relatively high-priced locations, so there's nothing from, from that side. At the very end, it's efficiency. You need the best people who feel comfortable, who have the ability to drive things, to be creative, to, uh, to, to be and to like to be in this place. And so in that respect, uh, there would be now no advantage to move everything to Singapore but it also would not make sense to give up our smaller uh, piece which we have in Singapore. That's interesting. In other words, competition amongst the cities, it increases everybody's game. Um, Martin, here's a question that you probably uh, frequently get, and it's from Vancouver, Canada. What is BA BASF doing to help improve the environment, especially air pollution in Hong Kong? Yeah, this is exactly one of the topics where we are active as a company. We are um, the largest catalyst manufacturer in the world. We are also the leading uh, catalyst producer for um, car, for in the automotive industry for, for um, catalysts. We have actually some cooperation here also in Hong Kong. We worked on with some companies to engage in buses and bring, uh, let's say, uh, pollution down. We have also several discussions with think tanks and key people and how, how we can improve there. We had, have done some exhibitions, some discussion rounds. This is one area where we do, and the other one is, uh, and I think that connects to your industry, it's not only about the design, but it's also about the materials you use. So BASF is in construction materials, we have uh, admixtures, we have insulation materials, which help to make buildings more energy efficient, and this is where we like to work together with developers and architects in order to bring those modern materials in and make them part of, of building concepts. And I think these are two major levers where we can be active and we are active in Hong Kong as well. Good answer. A question from Vietnam, but it, it's on Miramar. And the question is, Miramar is hot on the agenda for expansion for most companies. What's your view and plans for entering Myanmar? And this question is really for both of you. Um, so I'm going to start with um, David and then over to Martin. Myanmar. Um, we, we are working uh, in Myanmar at the moment, uh, but under uh, the UN um, delegation. Uh, we are one of the four architectural offices in the world that is licensed for preservation. Uh, so we were moved in by the UN uh, to make an assessment of the current cities and the current environment to see how preservation and also kind of how UNESCO needs to spend its money on um, kind of repairing uh, some of what is happening. And on the back of that exercise, uh, we obviously see what the opportunities are. Um, the opportunities are large, uh, but the opportunities are also so large uh, that you need to be extremely uh, careful about the reality of it. Um, see, looking at the current governmental uh, instability, but also kind of the, the learning process the government needs to still go through in Myanmar 
for us, uh, we are now working with them to develop regulations on development of cities of kind of their country, but also helping them to kind of look at uh, what are the priorities, because there doesn't seem to be a real priority setting yet, uh, which is obviously important for everybody that invests in a country to understand uh, am I investing in the right uh, priorities uh, that are really necessary for uh, the people in the country uh, because if that is not attached uh, the risk is um, very high. I agree with you David, uh, this is um, very much the key indicator how this um, very rural and culturally deeply embedded uh, society will develop into an industrial oriented one. Uh, we will basically follow our customers and uh, I think it is a little bit similar like maybe Vietnam some decades earlier so you can imagine that uh, there's a labor arbitrage so labor intensive industries will go there manufacturing uh, assembly for example like printers went to Vietnam and then you need plastic materials to serve the, the, the companies to assemble so this will be the first steps we take and the other part is agriculture as soon the agricultural uh, industry becomes a little bit more modern, then it is certainly very much about supporting them. This will be most probably the first steps, and we are also in the phase to uh, ramp up our, uh, our structures over there to capture that. Um, last question, and it's from Finland again. I checked the handwriting to the previous question, and it is the same. So thank you, Finland, for your active participation today in the questions. Um, it's a short one, and it's for both of you. Um, uh, again, I'll let uh, David start with this one, and it's about talent management or key people. What is your experience about, on how to deal with the challenge of keeping key people in your business? What's the glue? What's the glue to keep key people in your business? Um, I'm luckily in a business that people uh, consciously decide to go into, not for money reasons, uh, because architecture is not a money-making business uh, in the top of the world, but the recognition for architects is actually very high. If you kind of ask people uh, about professions that are really recognized, and architects are always kind of in the top ten. Uh, so people do it uh, for personal reasons, uh, for creative reasons, and um, also, they want to work uh, with people that are like-minded and talented. Uh, being an office that, without any arrogance, but being part of the top of the world, we, of course, can attract people and they stay happily, uh, but not when they don't have fun. And I think that in business is one of the most underestimated uh, uh, things. Uh, a lot of people always talk about money. But fun is probably uh, even more important if you don't have fun in your work. Uh, it will not uh, last long. Uh, so we invest a lot in our people. We invest a lot in fun within the projects and outside the projects. I work in the chartered accountancy business, so that's my challenge is getting people to find fun in, in what they do. Um, as we m move to uh, Martin on, the, on this question, uh, you're deputy chairman globally of this co huge company. Can you share with us how many employees are in in BASF again, and again about the glue of keeping key people? Yeah, well, I mean, overall, in, uh, globally, we are 110,000 people, 16,000 in, in the region here, 750 Hong Kong. Um, I would say it's a twofold market. The one is the um, expats, so the people from outside that come in, uh, they join us here. I don't know a single case where someone left us uh, during the Hong Kong stage. Uh, it is more about uh, the local people. In some of the areas, the uh, market is very short, I have to say. If you think about supply chain or something like this, there are not so many specialists in Hong Kong. You really have to attract them. Pay, I think, is the, the, the thing which has to be fine. But I think what is the adhesion and what keeps the people is the identification with the company. They like very much that we have given us this purpose. We create chemistry for a sustainable future. It is really about bringing in solutions to tackle uh, challenges in the future. This is, I think, what they like, and what they definitely like is to have an international career with BSF. So also local people out of Hong Kong have the opportunity to go abroad with the company and at some day to return. They can spend their whole lifetime in BSF, but they can also work in different uh, places in the world. And I think this is something uh, that fits very nicely, I think, to the global mentality of, of Hong Kong people. And with this, we have fortunately enough, a much lower fluctuation rate than the markets, which uh, indicates that we are doing well, but it is sometimes uh, still high, I have to say, not in Hong Kong itself, but definitely in China. 
um, you know, I like your point about the international companies, especially. We're all in international businesses, and that is one of the attractions is for our people to be able to work in, in different countries and move around within the same uh, company. Definitely a, a, a great people advantage. Um, those were terrific comments, uh, terrific answers to the questions. Everyone, let's please join me in giving a warm federation thank you to Martin and David.